Welcome to Faculty Insight, brought to you by Harvard Extension School in partnership with ThoughtCast. I'm Jenny Atia, and I'm speaking with Caroline Elkins, a Pulitzer Prize winning professor of history at Harvard University, who chairs the Committee on African Studies and also teaches at Harvard Extension School. Caroline, you won your Pulitzer for a book called Imperial Reckoning, the untold story of Britain's gulag in Kenya. And it describes the abuse and torture of Mau Mau prisoners by the British in the 1950s. So for starters, who were the Mau Mau and how were they treated? Well, the Mau Mau were primarily um, of the Kikuyu ethnic group, which is the largest ethnic group in Kenya. And they were looking to reclaim Ithaka Nawiathi, or land and freedom. And so the uprising began in 1952. And it was a situation whereby the Mau Mau were portrayed as these horrible, savage, awful human beings. And what I came to discover in the course of 10 years of research was that, in fact, um, the British government was accusing the Mau Mau of a great deal of what they themselves were guilty of. And they detained nearly the entire Kikuyu population in detention camps and emergency villages. And the kind of torture and abuse, um, deliberate food deprivation to the scale of famine was extraordinary. Would you call what you're doing in this case revisionist history, flipping the way we view this piece of, of history? Yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. You know, I think the, uh, my, my supporters or people who have positively reviewed my work see me as a revisionist historian. I think the detractor is I'm anywhere from a crackpot to um, somebody who's a far left-wing radical. And listen, I think for any of us as historians, what we're trying to do is to change the way people think. And so certainly what it has done is it's revised people not only the way they think about colonial Kenya, but it's revised the way, the way in which people think about the end of the British Empire more broadly. How did you, as a historian, find out about this systemic abuse? Right. I began the project with the idea that um, I was going to write a dissertation about the success of British liberal reform and the detention camps of Kenya. You know, in part because what was in the existing files in London was very much told a story about what was called rehabilitation or a hearts and minds program. And so I got up in front of my department here at Harvard. I did my graduate work at Harvard as a third year graduate student saying just that. That was my dissertation proposal. And then I went off and did the real sort of hardcore field work. And what I came to discover was that about a year into it, things weren't adding up, right? Um, number one, I was discovering that there are lots of files that were missing. Number two, I was doing uh, an incredible amount of interviews, not just with former survivors of the detention camps, these Kikuyu or those who had joined Mau Mau, but also former British colonial officers, missionaries, public officials, and the evidence wasn't squaring. So the question became, what happened if I took the entire premise and turned it upside down? What if I said this was a story about torture, murder, and massive cover-up? Well, when I did that, all the evidence made sense. It must have been a bit of a shock to the British who saw their mission as civilizing. Right. There's a very long, well-held belief that Britain got empire right. And in this instance, I do feel as though this particular book really began what became a much longer set of questioning about what that nation had done in its empire and did it really have the kind of legacy it thought it had. How did such honorable schoolboys turn into torturers? Well, you know, that's a $64,000 question, right? We knew about, as the British called them, one-offs, or bad apples, those were the classic lines, of individuals who had committed torture. Well, in fact, what we come to learn is that, no, in fact, what this is is a deliberate attempt to use extreme force, extreme measures, um, in order to win these end-of-empire wars. And I think that the, the premise that somehow or another this is shocking and, and it's simply not British to behave this way is, a, is an enduring legacy. It's an enduring legacy not only in Britain but elsewhere around the world. When you talk about empire, people will talk about the wretched French in Algeria, they'll talk about how, how terrible King Leopold was in Belgium. Nobody does it roll off the tip of their tongue that the British were committing torture and violating human rights legislations all over the world in the post-war period. Which may explain why it's hidden history. I believe that's so, but I also think the, the question also becomes what deliberate attempts were made to keep this from the public eye? Right, not only at the time, but after the fact. And I think in the case of Kenya, what we know is that they went through extreme lengths 
to try to destroy the historical record. You are actually, Caroline Elkins, involved as an expert witness in a court case that's going yeah. on right now, <clears throat> uh, an attempt to seek reparations for the victims from the British government. Right. How are they doing? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting case. Um, it's a landmark case. It's the first time the British government has ever been sued by a former colonized population. And so it is also one that's precedent setting. And quite frankly, the evidence is overwhelming. Eleventh and a half hour in February before some of this, the, uh, one of my big expert witness statements um, is, is to be handed in. The Foreign Office comes forward and says, after years, years, 50 years of people asking for files, and certainly several years in the context of a court case, come to the court, Your Honor, so sorry. We've miraculously found 300 boxes of previously undisclosed files, hundreds of thousands of them, all of them, chronicling the torture and murder and abuse and cover-up that went on. So they've been cl complicit in, one, the hidden history over time, two, in terms of trying to sort of devalue people who were tortured and claimants, and three, trying to trash a young academic's career. These hidden documents that have come to light because of the case vindicate you, don't they? In many ways, yeah. I mean, I think the tragedy in this is that the, the lateness in which these files have been released in terms of time has meant that you know, thousands and thousands of people have not been able to seek justice, or at least to have somebody admit that this actually happened to them. Caroline Elkins, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. You've been watching Faculty Insight, brought to you by Harvard Extension School in partnership with ThoughtCast. I'm Jenny Atia. Thanks for joining us.